So one of the things, if you're a weather buff, that we, we tend to kind of get in our day-to-day -day routine and we think that, that it's all about what's happening here at the ground level. What is the air doing here? What is our temperature? What is our humidity? What is our barometric pressure? But quite honestly, um, what's happening in, at upper elevations can be very, very important. And so kind of along those lines, we have this upper level wind that most of us are probably kind of unaware aware of. And this upper level wind that I want to describe, actually in both hemispheres, it very much flows um, at all latitudes, very much flows from the east to the west. And again, it's kind of upper, upper level wind. And um, although now I need to kind of describe, well, how do we get that wind going from, from the west to the east? How did that, how was that wind created? And it's created basically from the equator um, towards the poles at upper elevations, just like you see where to go. Um, um, at upper elevations, we, because the equator is warmer, we have a relatively high pressure up here near the equator, and at both poles at upper elevations, the, the, the air has settled and it's dense down there, but up, up top it is relatively low pressure because the air has settled, because we kind of have a column of cold air here. So this is to say, basically, we, we have a pressure gradient force. And I'll just kind of take a minute and draw it right here. I got room. Um, what I'm trying to describe is if this is the equator, zero degrees latitude. And so let's call this 90, uh, 90 degrees north, OK? And we'll call this 90 degrees south latitude. Um, we just generally, in, at upper elevations, it's different near the Earth's surface, but we generally have a high pressure here and a low pressure at both of the poles at upper elevations. I know it's a busy slide. Let me draw a low over here. Okay. Now, in the northern hemisphere, I guess I would focus on this part of my little ugly drawing. In the northern hemisphere, we have deflection to the right, right? And so actually, at upper elevations, that's why we have this sort of thing. Um, in the southern hemisphere, we have deflection to the, to the left. And actually, if you kind of convince yourself at upper elevations, we have that. And it's a westerly wind. Um, when, how do I say this? Well, maybe I'll just show you. But basically, um, parallel to lines of latitude, we have this wind called a geostrophic wind, okay? And the reason it's kind of parallel to, um, um, these aren't lines of latitude, although they could be lines of latitude. Instead, these are actually isobars at upper elevation. Um, and here was the high pressure I was telling you, um, closer to the equator, and this would be going north. Um, and here is the relatively low pressure. We have our initial pressure gradient force. In each one of these, these drawings, we can call that A, B, each one of these little figures, C, D, and E. Okay, each one of those figures, the red line is the pressure gradient force, which is always in the same direction from the high to the low. And you can see the Coriolis force. Remember, the Coriolis force becomes stronger and stronger the far at, at higher latitudes. And that's, uh, that's as you're progressing from A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E. And so actually, um, the, this right here, then, I'll go ahead and bring this up. This purple line is what way the wind is blowing. OK, the purple arrow is the, is the actual wind that's being created by the pressure gradient force and then deflected by the Coriolis force. And so it's up here where the wind is going parallel to the isobars, which are kind of lines of latitude in this case, that's what we call the geostrophic wind. There you go. So speaking of upper elevations, what you're looking at here is if you were to go, remember that in terms of millibars, surf, uh, at the surface we're running about 1,013 millibars. So the map that you're looking at is basically how high would you have to go up these are ISO heights. Let's see if I need to. How high would you have to go up to catch a 500 millibar pressure? 
it's 1,000 down here, how high do you need to go up? So these lines, these contour lines, these are actually in units of meters, okay? Pretty sure they're meters, but they're iso heights, yep, in meters. But you can kind of consider it a little bit like um, iso bars. It's a little bit confusing, I think, even. Um, we'll be talking more about ridges and troughs coming up but um, in a later part. But ridges are, generally speaking, a high pressure, and troughs are, generally speaking, a low pressure. And you can see those drawn in here. Again, these are ISO, ISO heights for 500 millibars. This is called a 500 millibar isobaric chart. And we can see we kind of have a high pressure right here. And actually, high pressures, ridges go like that. Kind of looks like a ridge, doesn't it? And relatively low pressures go like that. Kind of looks like a trough. So um, geostrophic wind, geostrophic uh, flow, okay? Generally going at all lat lines of latitude from the west to the east at upper elevations. Um, I'm just going to, this seems like an odd place to throw this, but actually it's probably more appropriate when we talk about kind of surface highs and surface lows. But according to the Bayes Ballots Law, it takes into account the fact that the Coriolis force is deflection um, to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. If you have the, if you're in the northern hemisphere, if you have the wind at your back, if you put out your, um, your left hand, um, yeah, if you put out, it's L and L. If you put out your left hand, you'll be pointing to the, the low pressure. If you put out your right hand, you'll be pointing to the high pressure. Bayes Ballot's Law. Again, kind of a strange place to put it. So geostrophic winds are kind of, to me, similar to gradient winds. And gradient winds are, did you see kind of the curvy nature of that isobaric, that 500 millibar isobaric map a few slides ago? Gradient winds um, take into consideration that not always do we have um, isobars that are parallel to e each other, like we have at upper elevations. So gradient winds then are basically the winds that kind of flow around those isobars that are curvy. That's how I think.